Let's begin reading in verse 1. <clears throat> in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now drop down to verse 14. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word. The word is the Son of God. And he is God. He's the creator. He's life. And he's light. All of this is speaking of Christ. And this one was made flesh. And he dwelt among us. All that glory that he had with the Father before anything was made. In the beginning. Before the beginning we know as the creation of this world. Before that. This is the glory he had with the Father. He's the Word. He's the Son of God. He's, he's God. He's the Creator. He's life. He's light. He was the, set up as the God-man mediator. All that glory he had with the Father before he made anything. And that's what John and the other apostles that were in the Mount of Transfiguration, that's the glory they saw. That's the glory they saw. And John's declaring here that the Word, that one who is the Word, he's the Son of God, he's God, he's the Creator, he's life, he's life. He's saying that same Word was made flesh. And we saw it. We're eyewitnesses. We saw him in the mount. Go, go back over to 1 John. This is what he's saying. It's what he's opened this, his epistle with over here. 1 John Verse 1, that which was from the beginning, which we've heard, which we've seen with our eyes, which we've looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we've seen, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we've seen and heard, declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowships with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. You know, if we read that kind of a witness in just a secular book, and somebody said, I saw it, and I'm telling you, this is what I saw, this is what I heard, this is what my hands handled, I'm telling you who this is. If we read that in a secular book about some, something that didn't amount to a hill of beans, we'd take it hook, line, and sinker and believe it. Wouldn't we? Why don't we believe John? He's saying, we saw this. We heard him. We're telling you, we saw his glory in the mount. We saw him. All the glory I'm telling you about he had before the world was made, we saw that glory in the Mount of Transfiguration. He's an eyewitness telling us this. And that's what he's declaring to us in, in the gospel. Now go back to John chapter 1. I want to just take this a, a little at a time, and I don't think I'm going to get through all of it, but I just want to try to cover the first verse if we can. Now, first of all, he says here, Christ is the Word. He said, in the beginning was the Word. Now, I think it's, it's uh, wise. The Spirit of God moved John to call him the Word, capital W-O-R-D. There's a reason for that. The unbelieving Jews, as well as the philosophers and the Gnostics, they called Messiah. They, were, they talked about the coming Messiah, and they called him the Word, capital W-O-R-D. The unbelieving Jews called him the Word. The philosophers called him the Word. The, the Gnostics called him the Word. They didn't believe Messiah had come. They didn't believe Christ was the Messiah. But they called him the Word. I'll give you an example. 
when they would read Psalm 110.1 where it says, the Lord said to my Lord, they would say, the Lord said to the Word. Capital W-O-R-D. The Lord said to the Word. So they, they were... They used that phrase, they used that title for the coming Messiah. They referred to him as the Word. Now, John says here, he starts off where they have some common ground. We agree that the Messiah is the Word. He, he's, you know, he's meeting them on common ground. He's the Word. And he says, and this Word was made flesh. The one you're saying the Word, he's come. John said. He made faith. We saw his glory in the Mount of Transfiguration. So he's declaring that this glory that Christ had before the world was made, that's the glory Christ spoke about in John 17. When he was praying to the Father and he said, Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the earth was. Before the world was. He's talking about his glory as God-man, as the mediator. I'm not saying he was a man yet. He, he, was, he was not incarnate, but he was already set up in the purpose and decree of God as the God-man, the Word. The Word is how he's known. That's, that's, that's the revelation of God. Everything God has to say, he's saying through Christ to us. He's the word. He conveys, manifests who God is. Go over to Revelation 19. Revelation 19, and look at verse uh, 11. John said, I saw heaven open, behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed, clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. That's who Christ is. He's the Word of God. A word is an expression, a word let you know somebody's heart. It's how you convey meaning. And Christ is the Word. He's the way God manifests who He is. God's invisible. He's spirit. This is how God declares who He is. In Christ, the Word made flesh. Hebrews 1 says, God at sundry times in a different manner spake in time past by the prophets. But He has in these last days spoken to us by His Son. This is God's word to us. He spoke by his son. He said, whom he appointed heir of all things. When did he do that? In the beginning that John's talking about. In eternity. By him he made the worlds. John said the same thing. The Hebrew writer said, he's the brightness of his glory. That's what John's declaring. He's the express image of his person, and he upholds all things by the word of his power. John's declaring all of that in verse 1 of his gospel. All this glory he had from the beginning, and he by himself purged our sin and went back to glory and sat down at God's right hand. God's spoken to us by his Son. Now in eternity, we're talking about in the beginning, we're talking about before that. We're talking about eternity, when there was nothing but God. Christ is the wisdom of God. That word, word, and wisdom, they're synonymous. He's the wisdom of God. He's the counsel of God. He's the covenant of God. Everything God has to convey to you, the sinner, Christ is in that name, the word. Go over to Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8, and look over here at verse uh, 14. Now, he's speaking here as wisdom, but he's speaking here as the word. And this is Christ. This is who we're talking about here. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. Remember, he's made unto us wisdom. He's the counsel of God, the counselor. I am understanding. 
I have strength. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit's better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I'll fill their treasures. Now watch this. The Lord possessed me in the beginning, in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. Before he created anything, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him. I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of the earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. In eternity, Christ is the word. God purposed, he decreed everything God would do in time in Christ, in the word. The eternal word is the wisdom and power of God. He's the counsel of God. He is the counsel. We, men and, you know, talk about God entered into a council. Christ is the counsel. He is the counsel of God. He's the word. He's the covenant. He tells us plainly, I gave him for a covenant. He's the word. He's the gospel. That's... You want somebody want to know, ask you, what, what's, what's the gospel you preach? Christ. He's the gospel. He is the gospel. He is salvation. He entered covenant to lay down his life for his people and make us the righteousness of God in him. He's the word. He's, John said there in the beginning. You know how many times we're told that our salvation was already purposed and decreed and worked from before the world was made. Over and over we're told that. John said, I was given grace to preach the gospel. And listen to this. In Ephesians 3, he said, to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. I'm sent to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. That's when John says he's the word, he's the manifold wisdom of God. Listen, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by his faithfulness. That's all encompassed in that word, word. He's the mystery. All God's purpose that he would bring to pass in time, all his counsel, it was all in Christ, the word, from the very beginning. He says in Isaiah 48, let's look at this, Isaiah 48, 16. He says, come ye near unto me, hear ye this. I've not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, there am I. Only God, only God could use that kind of language. From the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and his spirit hath sent me. Who's saying this? Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Look at Isaiah 41 and verse 4. Isaiah 
he says, Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? You know what he's saying? You, you take all the generations from Adam to the last generation on this earth. He said, I called them all from the beginning. This beginning John's talking about before ever anything was made. I, the Lord, the first and with the last, I am he. Christ said in Revelation, I'm the Alpha and I'm the Omega. God trusted it all to him, the word, and he's the beginning and the end. He, he's, he's the whole alphabet of everything God has to say. Look at Isaiah 46 in verse 9. Remember the former things of old. This is what he's talking about all from eternity. For I'm God and there's none else. I'm God and there's none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. That's what he means by I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. I declare the end from the beginning. From ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand. My word. He's the word. My counsel shall stand. I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous man from the east, Christ is the man that executes God's counsel from a far country. Yeah, I've spoken it. I also bring it to pass. I've purposed it. I will also do it. The election of God's people, the redemption of God's people, the regeneration of God's people, the, the, the way he would do it on the cross, the everything, the works were finished from the foundation of the world in Christ who cannot fail, in Christ the word, it was all settled. We're told that over and over. We're bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. When's the beginning? Before anything was made. In the word. According as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. He, he, it says, uh, Peter said, he verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. The word, before there was anything, he was foreordained. God ordained him to be the God-man. We're talking about him as the Christ, the God-man. And then he came forth as the word so that we understand God and can hear God and understand this gospel of God. When he came, he communicated to us. He revealed to us. He made manifest to us the mystery, the, the salvation of God. Uh, Paul told Timothy, he saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ. The word was before and then the word came forth, and that's how we know the word of God. We know the gospel. He, he made manifest God in his purpose. That's what, that's what the word is. God's invisible. How are we going to see God? Christ is everything God has to say to us. He's the word of God to us, the living word. And that word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Look down there at verse 15. John the Baptist, bear witness of him. What he say, this was he of whom I spake, he that cometh after me, he's preferred before me, for he was before me. He's from eternity. So, so John says, he's the word, I agree with you, he's the word. And that word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Isn't it amazing? John, who most people believe was, I believe he was, they, he was the Lord's nephew. And uh, I believe that's it. According to the flesh, I think Joseph had a daughter named Salome who was John's mother. And then Joseph was the Lord's father according to the flesh, you know. But John laid on the breast of the word. He said, I, we handled him, we saw him, we heard him, 
This one who existed before time ever was a thing. And John said, I, I leaned upon his breast, talked to him. That's God in human flesh. That's just astounding. And then look now back at our text. Uh, I'm not going to get far on this, I don't think. But John says here he's a distinct person in the Godhead, and he is God. Now look here at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now again, the unbelieving Jews, as well as the heathen philosophers and the Gnostics, they were like modern day so-called Jehovah's Witnesses. Their Bible doesn't say this. The Watchtower says he was a God, because they don't believe he was God. He was a God. But John here says he's the second person in the Trinity. He's the Son of God. He says here, the word was with God. That means he, he was distinct from God as, a, as the person of the Son of God. This is the relation of Christ to the Godhead. With God means he's the second person in the Trinity. The God the Father, the Son of God, and God the Holy Spirit. And then when he says he was God, that means those three persons are one God. So he's a distinct person in the Godhead, but he's, he is God. That's why John said over in 1 John 5, 7, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Three distinct persons, but only one God. Now the Gnostics believe that, that when he came in the flesh, if he was manifest in the flesh, and he truly took flesh, then he would have been sinned and been a sinner. So they said he couldn't have really been made flesh. He just appeared like he was made flesh. Some kind of apparition or something. John says, no, the word was made flesh. He was made flesh. He dwelt among us. We saw his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So fully, perfectly did Christ reveal God. I mean, perfectly Fully he revealed God so that he could say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He is God. He is God. So John said, don't believe every spirit. He said, this is how you're going to know if a man's sin of God, if he confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, he's of God. And that's what he was referring to was the Gnostics who were saying, he, wasn't, he came and, and we saw it, but he really wasn't made flesh. He just appeared that way. John said, no, he was made flesh. He was made flesh. And any man that says he wasn't, John said, is an antichrist. When men can't understand it, and Paul said, without controversy, great submission of God in this. God was manifest in the flesh. He came in the flesh. Without sin. Scripture says in all points it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. So he was made of a woman. He was made flesh. He was made under the law because he had to redeem his people out from under the law. In order for God to be righteous and not punish one who was innocent, there wouldn't be justice. There wouldn't be righteousness in any shape, form, or fashion. There wouldn't be justice. So what did he do? He made him sin. He made him bear the sin of his people. So God was just to pour out wrath on him. Doing so, God poured out that wrath on him and he was made a curse for us and redeemed us from the curse of the law. And now, having made his people the righteousness of God, now he's made higher than the heavens. He's made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. He's gone back to eternity where he was, without beginning of days, without ending of days, without mother, without father, like Melchizedek. He's a high priest forever, ever living to make intercession for his people. His work's finished. He came, he, he, he came and he accomplished the work, and he made us righteous, and he went back to glory. It's real. And then look, he tells us here, he's the creator, the life, the light of men. 
verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. Now, this is probably speaking of creation here. This is the second beginning. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Christ is the word. God entrusted everything to him to do this whole work, and he's the word who spoke everything into existence. All things were made by him. All things. Without him was not anything made that was made. When we read Genesis 1, and it's 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. This is who we're talking about. The earth was, was without form. It was a picture of the fall in Adam. The spirit moved upon the deep. And God said. God, the word, spoke the word. It said, Let there be light. And there was light. And he didn't create the sun for four more days. <laughs> the sun wasn't created until the fourth day. He said, let there be light, and there was light. The light shined in the darkness. He's the light. He's the creator. He created that first creation, and he gave life and light to picture the new creation. And he's the light and the life of that new creation. I think this is what Paul's talking about in Colossians. He said he's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, meaning he created them all. By him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible. He's before all things. By him all things consist. They were created by him and for him. That's the first creation. And all of that pictures how Christ creates the new creation. His people, his church in righteousness. And the next thing he says is he's the head of the body, the church. Who's the beginning? The firstborn of every, uh, firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have the preeminence. It pleased the Father that in him all fullness dwell. And he made peace through the blood of his cross. He reconciled those that were in heaven and those that were in earth. His people he reconciled us to God. He was made flesh and he bore the sins of his people and he satisfied justice for God and he justified his people. And doing so, he's the word who manifests to us God's holiness. He made known to us God's righteousness. He made known to us God's mercy and God's kindness and God's love. Everything we know about God, we see it in Christ, particularly at the cross. What he accomplished. And he creates his people anew in righteousness. He said, I create a new heavens and a new earth. He's the one that created the first. He's the one that creates the new. I create a new heavens and a new earth. The former won't be remembered. It won't come into mind. None of this that we see now. He said he's going to fold it up like you fold up a, a vest. Put it away. But this new heaven and new earth is created in righteousness. His righteousness. Look over at Revelation 21. John said, verse 1, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven, the first earth were passed away. There was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That New Jerusalem is, is all his people made righteous and holy by Christ. It's his people. That's his church. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It's done. And what did he say next? I am the Alpha. I'm that one that John told you all about in the beginning. I'm the Alpha. And I'm the Omega. I'm the one here now that's ushering in this new creation. Completed. 
I'm the beginning and the end. And I'll give unto him that's a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Who did John say that life is? He says in our text, he says in the next word, he says, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. In him was life, and the life was the, the light of men. How did Adam have life? Well, God breathed the breath of life to him. That was Christ the life. He had life by Christ giving him life. He didn't give him immutable life. He didn't give him life that couldn't be changed. But he gave him life. And Adam sinned and died. Who, who sustained him in life even after he sinned and died? Christ did. Who gives a, a dead sinner that comes into this world? How come he's alive? Christ gives him life. I'm talking about just natural life. John said he's not far from every one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. He's the life of the man who's cussing his name and hates him. And if he took that life away, he'd meet him. We're just so helpless. We're just so frail and fragile. All he's got to do is take away the life, and we're standing in front of his presence. And he's the light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Every man has understanding. He's the light of our understanding. He's the light. But he's also spiritual life and spiritual light. And when he's given that, he quickened us. It'll never be taken away. Forever with him. Because we're life. The light shined in darkness. The dark darkness comprehended it not. John came preaching the light. Nobody listened to him. Christ came into his own. His own received him not. How's a man going to be made to have this life and this light? He said, as many as received him... To, get, to them gave he the privilege to become the sons of God, to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. But of God. Got to be born of God. That, he's the creator of everything, spiritual and temporal. John said, in that word, that very life, that very God was made flesh, and we saw his glory. We're eyewitnesses. I do pray, I, I pray that he would call somebody to believe the witness. I don't want to just preach to go through a form. I don't want to be here just to go through a form of religion and go through a religious exercise. I want Christ to be glorified, and I want to see his people comforted, and I want to see sinners called out of darkness into his light, called out of death into life. Made a new creation by Christ. <clears throat> Listen to this witness. This is the record. God hath given to us eternal life, and this life's in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son hath not life. We're going to meet him. He's, he's coming again, and either he's going to come again, and we're going to meet him that way, or he's going to take your physical life from you, and you're going to meet him in judgment face to face. But we're going to meet him. You're going to deal with God. This one we're talking about, you're going to meet him. You know, you that know God, think about this. We'd be scared to death meeting him and knowing him. You know, you know, I mean, it, it would be frightening. If you looked up and saw Christ coming, don't tell me, I know that we're not going to hide and run under the rocks like the unbelievers are, but you still, it's something we've never seen. You're still going to have some bit of, of trepidation when you look up and see him to some degree. And you're going to stand before almighty, holy God. But imagine if you didn't have Christ and you stood there. That's why scripture says they'll run and try to beg for the rocks to fall on them. That won't do any good. Still going to meet him. 
So I pray he give you a heart to, this is the witness. These are eyewitnesses. You read something on the internet, some, some harebrained wrote, people will act like it's the truth. Oh, that's got to be true. It was on the internet. This is, this is one of God's apostles that said, I saw him. I saw him. I saw him in the mouth. Find out who he is. Believe on him. Amen. All right, brethren, let's stand together. Our gracious God, we thank you for, thank you that the works were finished from the foundation of the world. We're thankful, Lord, that Christ is a lamb slain from the very beginning. You left nothing in our hands, nothing undone. Thank you for sending your only begotten Son. Lord, make us realize just how true he is salvation. Make us seek him, make us flee to Christ. And Lord, make us worship. We thank you for your people. Thank you for our brethren everywhere. Pray that you be with them today as they meet. Make your gospel go forth in truth and in spirit. And let us all today as we meet together, let us all be gathered around your throne in glory, worshiping you, singing praises to you, the church in heaven and in earth, that you might get all the honor from every single tongue and eye and heart in your people. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen.